In this video, I'm going to show you how we can deploy a botnet inside the our emulator. Now, what is botnet? Uh, in cybersecurity, and botnet is kind of a network, and that is intended for launching attacks. A botnet typically consists of a controller, and this controller is going to actually the control a lot of this net. They are not connected to through the same network, but these computers we call the bots. And they are actually uh, the computer that are compromised. They are not belong to the attacker. They belong to you, belong to your neighbor, and they're compromised computer. So once the computer gets compromised, and the attacker will install this uh, bot software inside this computer. And this bot software is going to actually eventually connect to the controller. And then to listen to the command issued by the controllers. And that form the botnet. Okay. And the computer, the bot, sometimes they are not a real conventional computer. And they could be IoT device. So these days, a lot of IoT device, because they are vulnerable, and they can be compromised, and they can become a bot. And this happens in the real world. There's some baby monitors and some webcam, and they are IoT devices. And they actually get compromised, and they become part of the botnet. We're going to use uh, open source uh, the botnet uh, software called a BY BYOB, uh, Bring Your Own Botnet. And this is actually a very popular open source. So we're going to use this BYOB and inside our emulator and then to deploy a botnet. Uh, here's the code. So deploying a botnet inside our emulator is actually not very difficult. In this example, and I am just using an uh, existing one. If you look at the uh, B0 and that mini internet, I actually have a code to build that mini internet, but I actually put that inside a file. This pre-built mini internet can be actually loaded into other the emulator. And so you can reuse the one that you built before. After that, I'm just going to actually create a botnet service. Remember, we're actually uh, building things on layers. So we got the bot botnet service and the client service, and they're just two different layers. Now, first, I'm going to create a botnet controller. And so this is the probably the most important part of the botnet. So I, I'm going to actually create a controller. Controller is just a, a, a node. So I'm going to create uh, this node. So, but I'm going to create this uh, bo a virtual node called a bot controller. And that's just a virtual node. And you can use, uh, put more files. So especially if you want to launch attack, you write your own attack program. And you can put your programs inside this controller. And that's very straightforward. And, but this is a virtual node. You do need to eventually bind this virtual node into a physical node in the base layer, the one that we preloaded from existing mini internet. And this one will let you to do that. You do the binding, and I am going to specify the IP address. I want to bind this into a particular IP address. And if it doesn't exist, and create, create one for me, and so that's what this is doing. And that's done for the controller. And next, we're going to create many uh, bots. And in this case, I'm only created four. But in the real world, and you're probably going to create uh, maybe 100 of them. And each one is a virtual node. And remember, all the virtual nodes eventually is going to be bind to a physical node. So if you have uh, maybe a few hundred of the container inside, and you can have a, a a, a few hundred of bots and map to uh, those uh, physical nodes. In this example, I'm going to use four, and I'm using a for loop, and I create a virtual node name, and I'm going to install the client on this virtual node. And that's, that's what we do. And we install the, install the bot client, but I also need to let every bot node know 
their server, their controller. So I'm going to actually set the server and using the virtual node. Okay, and we're not going to set the, uh, for the uh, for the IP address. We're going to set using the virtual node. The, re the, the reason why we do that is because I want this actually the dot botnet to be portable and to different uh, the network. In some other emulator, you may not even have that IP address. But if you actually just set this using the virtual node, then that should be okay. So eventually, they're going to be replaced by the actual IP address. And then you, you're going to actually uh, bind every single virtual node for the bot and to a physical node. And that's it. You, you're done. You deploy the controller. You deploy the bots. And now, next things, which is optional, you can do is, uh, because if you have uh, so many of them on the map, and it's going to be difficult to identify them. So I actually customize their name, and I put a prefix bot dash so I can pick them up from the map. Okay, so that's uh, pretty much what we built. And you can see I have already built that inside here. Uh, in, in this program, you can see I'm already here. If you see this, this is the basic. Uh, once I, you run this, it's going to produce the output. And I am ex already started. I have already started all the Docker containers. And from the client, and this is what you see. And this is the mini internet, and it has many nodes. Now I just want to find out where my bot is. There's too many of them. So I'm just going to use the, remember the customize the name. So I'm just going to do this. And all this node name that started with bot, they're going to be highlighted. And let's see where is my controller. OK, this is the 152. This is one, the bot. Uh, let me see here. OK, controller is here. So this is my controller. So here, let's get on to that because the, this is the most important part. Now, inside the controller, what we will do is we have already installed the BYOB on those nodes. And what we need to do is when we bring that up, bring up the server. So the, you just go to this folder. We have installed the BYOB in that folder. So let's just go there and cd and the uh, BYOB. OK, now we're going to BYOB again. Now you see the server program. OK, so we're going to just run the server program. And, and we need to set the port number. So uh, 445. OK, so we're going to do the. OK, now this is going to start it. Now just wait for the client to connect. I already kept one connection here. Uh, just waiting for a little bit more time, because it's going to take a client a little bit of time to connect. So I get this one. OK, uh, I should have more. Let's see. OK, now I get a few more. OK, so if you want to run the session, and you will see, and then you got, OK, I got I got the next two. So this this one I got four now. Okay. So yeah, you can you can see them and you can run this command and to identify the sessions and which is connected. Okay. So that just uh, uh, that just show you that you got them, and that just demonstrate that you you start a server and now this client they actually now start to connect to you. Now, in the real world, this BYOB uh, software, and they have a technique. They actually implement technique to hide the controller. If you have a fixed IP address, that's going to be very, very difficult to defeat. And actually, the botnet uses a lot of uh, technique to hide the controller. And in this demo, we are not going to do, demonstrate that. And we are still actually adding this new API and to our the botnet service. So this. It's still a work in progress. Okay, so if you are interested in helping us, working together with us, and to contribute to this open source, and this is definitely one of the things, and you can contribute. Now, I just want to demonstrate a very, very simple attack. So I'm not going to dive too much into this BYOB, which is very powerful. You can do a lot of interesting things. I'm just going just to do the denial service. So on the server, 
you can broadcast a command. So I'm going to broadcast this command. I'm going to actually uh, do the DLAM service attack on this computer, 10.161.0.71. So I am going to just copy and paste from here. Now I can, yes, it's better just to visualize the attack. So let me just zoom out. Okay, I am just going to put ICMP traffic on. Okay, because ping is ICMP. Now I am going to just uh, tell all my bots now to launch the attack. So this command basically says to send this pin packet with size of 5000 towards this final destination. And we're gonna send out the 10 packet just for demonstration purpose. Okay, so you can see if I hit the return and all my bots is gonna launch the attack. And you can see that what happens. Now everybody just gonna flash the final destination and you can, you can find um, where the final destination is. Yeah, one, this is the final destination. Yeah, this is, this is the final destination, okay. And then you can, you can try it again, so that's. And you can see now everybody gonna flash and uh, flood this one. And if you turn on the TCP dump and you can see a lot of traffic. And that is actually one of the primary use of botnet and to really to launch the denial service attack on their target. Because you have many, in the real world, you could have tens of thousands of machines and simultaneously and flood the target. So that is going to be a very powerful attack. That's the, uh, the attack demo I want to show. As I said, this is a work in progress and this is an open source and we're gonna actually add a new feature, for example, hiding the controller's IP address. Once we build that into emulator, we can use that and to help students understand how the botnet works. And we can also uh, incorporate the botnet detection and so add that to the activity. So help students to not only just understand the, how the attack works, but also how you can defend against and this kind of attack. And this is an open source project. If you are interested, we definitely welcome you to join us and together so we can actually um, create more features and to this botnet service. And then that could be as a base and for the lab activities.